Uh, you're tuned into the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Wait, what was the thing you were going to tell us? I'm Moshe Kasher. That's uh, Natasha Legero. Hi. Returning to the podcast, uh, not only a dear friend, but a dear friend of the podcast, uh, our friend Guy Branham. Good to be here. Um, I miss both of you very much, and I enjoy all of the time I get with you. Well, we're, we're supposed to have dinner together. We're supposed to go to Paris together. The only time I see you now is if we podcast. That's not really a, Not sad. even that. We were supposed to do a... Um, we were supposed to do a lesser known films by um, L Robocop. Uh, oh, Verhoeven, Paul Verhoeven. Verhoeven. We were supposed to do a Verhoeven yeah. deep dive. We didn't do that either. I mean, so, that would be pretty great. Pretty sad, you guys. Yeah, I know. It's pathetic, but we've known each other 20 years, and here we are, guy. It's a, it's a horrible way of looking at it 20 years, but to think a uh, coffee table book about metrosexuals that was, our, uh, <laughs> that was, our, was the spark that started this flame that's persisted. Well, exactly. And I, I love that story so much because Guy and I, I think I pitched it to you. Yeah. I, this was back when this was a, an even slightly cool idea to bring to the table. I, honestly, I don't know that we had the word metrosexual quite yet at that point in time. <laughs> but it was a gay man's guide to acting. It was a it was a gay man's guide to teach straight men how to act more feminine in order to get women. And we and we that gonna, never took off. We, not only did it not take off, the guy wrote us back when we wrote our treatment. Keep your day job. <laughs> you guys, for, you guys submitted this. Yes, to this like. <laughs> Like rinky dink, like publisher and he of said, keep your day keep jobs. your day jobs. Well, he didn't get it. it. Was obviously funny. I guess he thought he didn't think so. So the the fact that you're so successful, guy, you are having an amazing run this year, and the fact that I have maintained a modicum of success and quit my day job, I'm I just I hope that guy's listening right now. May he rue the day. Quit your day. Don't quit your day job. Literally, don't quit your day job. I don't think I've ever been told that. Guy, you were telling... Yes, you did. Someone told me not to quit my day job. Someone told you you would never make it as an actress that's because you were too short. That's different than don't quit your day job. No, I know. It's very hacky. Also, yeah. isn't being short the greatest advantage that an actress in Hollywood can have? That like a 5'7 boy with like a very pretty face can stand next to Natasha and tower over her? That is really a good strapping. point. But this is a great story from Natasha's past is that she did an audition for a management company when she was young and desperate. And they call, she called at 4.10 p.m. when they told her to call. And they said, we talked about it. You were great. We think you're too short to be an actress. The thing is, is everyone you have to go through at the beginning of your career is an idiot who has not advanced beyond that space. And... Right. Like, They're the, working like a six-tier talent agents, the Lion Talent Group yeah. in, in Manhattan. But their offices are in like... We hawk in. I know? think probably it's possible that this manager that told you you're too short is the representative of this publisher and manages <laughs> them, and they should both go fuck themselves. Guy, you had an anecdote you were going to tell us about Hebrew school, which will lead us, <laughs> lead us directly into the rest of this chat. It was about college-level Hebrew. Yeah. So my college-level Hebrew, this is not an anecdote that I would tell anyone but Moshe Kasher, because it's very boring. But my well, Moshe's like, save it for the podcast. My, <laughs> my, I didn't know it was boring. My, my college <laughs> Hebrew teacher- No, guy said it would elicit a wry Berkeley smile. <laughs> <laughs> and Moshe's like, let's save it for the podcast. Um, so my college uh, Hebrew teacher was a lesbian and she and her like civil rights attorney wife just sort of like were just like smashed barriers left and right in the way that only a pair of like deep Israeli lesbians can do. Like the year after I took Hebrew with her, they um, broke down the gender barrier for leading in uh, ballroom dancing classes at Berkeley. <laughs> sure. And then like two years later, I was like, what's going on with Ruti? And I Googled Ruti and she and her wife had just gone to the Supreme Court to get second parent adoption rights on uh, the baby that they had. Had, and then they cranked out three baby boys and I did the other day Google them to see what these children of lesbians had turned like what happens to somebody who has those two moms and the answer was that the youngest one transferred like from Northwestern to Gallaudet um, because though and I was like did they have you know a, a, a son who couldn't hear and the answer is no like he just was so full of like the, all of the children were full of leftist passion and his leftist passion was 
I will uh, like I will understand signing and bring it to the world the way that my mother brought Hebrew to the world. Interesting. And w- let me tell you that that's going to elicit more than a wry smile from me, guy. Because do you know who my Hebrew teacher was at UC Berkeley, Summer Olpan? It was a woman from Israel named Ruti. And I got to think it was the same person. There were two Rutis. I, did you have. <laughs> oh, did, no, there were did, not two Rutis. There Ruti. was Ru- Ruti Adler and Ruti Kaddish. Ruti Adler is my person. I mean, Ruti Adler, I did not care for. <laughs> now, Ruti Adler did not care for me. <laughs> Because I had just gotten home from a, a semester abroad in Israel, and I was in a bit of a, um, I, I guess, a youthful uh, Israeli love affair. Like, I just had read Exodus, and I was just like, everything about Israel is good. I, I will turn a blind eye to absolutely any problematic history that has occurred there. And Ruti was like a hardcore Israeli leftist uh, and very angry at the Israeli system. And I never brought up, Israel, but she could smell it on me. She could smell the kind of into, but it was this experience that I don't know if you've ever had an experience like this, Natasha, where you think someone doesn't like you, but you think, but you're like, I'm probably just being like dramatic and self centered and thinking a person doesn't like me. And then I met with this study buddy and we sat down. The first thing he said was, So Ruti really does not like you. Are you getting that vibe from her? (laughs) It was like, fears confirmed. Guy, I have a question. Elon Musk bought Twitter and he wants to, would you pay $20 a month to verify your- To keep your verification? What's the amount of money that you would keep? Jesus Christ, no. People say five, people saying 20 to keep your blue check mark. I mean, the thing is, is everyone's saying that they're just going to leave. I don't know that I get that much joy out of Twitter anymore. I took it off of my phone so I wouldn't fight with people. And I don't use it. Moshe does, though. I get a lot of joy out of it. What I will you do, do? Yes, absolutely. What I'll do is I'll wake up, I'll kind of turn over, open the phone, flip open Twitter, scroll for a while, and be like, oh, yeah, I am in a state, I've plunged myself into a state of horrifying depression. <laughs> I'm worried about climate, anti-Semitism, transphobia, racism, the end of democracy, and then I start my day. <laughs> So yeah, no. That's before he has his coffee. That's before coffee. I say, don't even tweet at me before I've had my coffee. The thing is, I do want to know about anti-Semitic tagging in Florida before someone's had time to write an article about it, you know? (laughs) And like Twitter just gives you the the straight to the veins. (laughs) It's true. <laughs> like outrage. It like is, it's just like the picture of it or something. Yeah. Before someone's it is how article. I found out Michael Jackson died. I remember I found out Michael Jackson died before it hit the news the news cycle. Because, From Twitter, I remember that. By the way, Lula won the election in Brazil. I don't know if that's hit the airwaves, but the leftist leader of Brazil has ousted the Trump-like figure in Brazil, which means which might mean the saving of the rainforests. This is that. There's some good news. Guy, do you think that um, Elon Musk will just let uh, people like Kanye and Trump spout like anti-Semitic hate speech? I mean, it seems like that was his goal was, you know, like libertarian nightmare. Um, but also, I wonder if that will be a good business decision. You have to assume he's going to be making good business decisions. Like, do right, you- but are we worried about his 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 financial you know, uh, gains, or are we worried about society at large? I mean, I'm worried about society, but my hope is that, like, people saying, oh, Jesus, I don't want that, might drive them off of the platform and make him sort of, like, do something better. But also, like, never underestimate the willingness of people to, like, slog through shit to get the gentle jolt of being mad. That was the opening line in our treatment for the metrosexual. I thought it was, I believe it was called FOMO. It was called FOMO, F-A-U-X-MO, So they actually typed to you, don't quit your day job? I could probably find the email if I looked hard enough. Yeah, he was very offended by what we turned That's a really good title. FOMO, it's yes, uh, FOMO, a metrosexual's guide to acting gay in order to get girls. And I don't think we could get away with that in this. this not not at all, age. but I think we were like three years ahead of our time. And if we had, you know, hit, hit the iron in 2006, that's right. We could have been in, you know, sh- I mean, the trouble is, is that we didn't wait for the beginning of Twitter to make it one of the early vi- viral viral twi- accounts. Yes. That could have been good. The uh, voice of good, the tweet of God and FOMO. You know, people are winning um, Emmys or being nominated for Emmys off of Grinder. Is really? Yeah. Oh yeah, they uh, Grinder did the original series and it got into best short 
best digital <laughs> short because um, what's the thing that gave everyone money? Uh, Quibi failed. And it went to Grinder. Well, it, it, it was just that we all assumed that Quibi would be dominating all of the short subject stuff at the Emmys. And then Grinder is in the mix. Huh? Fuck, man. When I heard <laughs> when I heard Elon bought Twitter, I was like, oh, I miss a quick bite. I just <laughs> I, my kingdom for a quick bite. You know, everything's so dark and so dour. Just if I could have a quick bite, just a Katzenberg era quick bite. Have I told you my theory that it is just the producers? That he and Meg Whitman were like, we'll raise $2 billion for the worst idea ever. For a tax break? And possibly, or just, I, love that. I like to imagine that they hid some of the money and then sailed off with it. That is, I really like that theory. And by the way, speaking of which, I think, I think Twitter would have, every social media platform is a pyramid scheme <laughs> and they are all fake and none of them are profitable. How could they be profitable? And they will eventually collapse. Maybe, maybe TikTok. Natasha, do you get joy from Instagram? Um, I can certainly waste some time on there, but it never feels that good. Yeah. And I always feel like after about five swipes, I'm like, okay, I, I need to stop. <laughs> uh, you're you're a five swipe. I'm Max. a five swiper. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd say five swipes three times a day. I do with <laughs> with TikTok on I'll a do, good day. With TikTok, you don't have to swipe, so I'll do five wipes, and it just makes the time go by. Well, it's that's always, a poo -poo joke. It, al it always just feels like, and the TikTok stuff that's on Instagram, it just feels very, um, like people are really trying to make a comedy video or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of over it. I, I'm deeply worried about the comedy sensibilities that oh, it's over. YouTube and TikTok and Vine have given the next generation of children. Absolutely. They're like silent movie actors. Yeah. 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 That is really good. That is, and editing is more important than content. I, I mean, the, the level has gotten so low, and I watch it. I'm, and I'm watching it. I'm, I'm watching it going, why am I watching this? I, the unfortunate truth is that like 80% of my TikTok followers were just like guys with big asses who kind of try to dance. and You like that. Or kind of try to be funny. And I look at the big asses. It's funny you say big <laughs> asses because I just did, I was at the Bell House last night in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. It was a great fucking show. It was so fun. And uh, Sophie Buttle, very funny. Very funny. Young comedian, open for me. And I've seen her before, but she had this bit about her boyfriend's uh, post-sex thing. She's, it's a great bit, but um, about what he will get, how much, you know how much a guy likes you based on what uh, accoutrement he will get for you to wipe yourself up. If he waits for the water to heat up, he really loves you or whatever. But then she had this observation in that joke about watching her boyfriend walk to the bathroom and how small his butt was. <laughs> And it was the kind of observational comedy that was like, it's perfect because it's so, I would never think of it, but the moment she said it, it I laughed and I was offended. It hurt me. <laughs> it hurt me. Because you know you have a bony ass butt. Yeah, yeah it, the truth of it hurts so deeply. And I, we were talking at dinner last night about big butts on guys. Is, it's a whole different category. Good butt on guys is a different category than good butt on girls. I've it's never a, dated a guy with a good butt. Right. What's no a good butt? Much. A bubble uh, butt. Yes. A bubble butt? But a not boy. like a Nicki Minaj bubble butt, no. is it? No. I've never entirely understood what women's butts are supposed to do. Like, um, <laughs> and I honestly think it was showgirls because I was like, is that what they want? Um, <laughs> but I don't think that's what they want. Well, all we want is for them to back it up. That's what it's, that's its primary thing is to back it up. And and by the way, speaking of Lula winning, uh, we, we, we Viva Brazil because yes. we want a BBL. We want Brazilian butt lifts for, on every one. I want, if I was president, a Brazilian butt lift, free Brazilian butt lift for every 18 year, every person that turns 18 that wants it can get a free BBL. I have a number of questions about Brazil. I Did they just get the perfect combination of genetics to make the most beautiful people on the planet? Or do only the most beautiful people like then go to live in Los Angeles and New York and you see them? And there are just like lots of regular Brazilians around Brazil. Oh, there's like an ugly part of Brazil. <laughs> I don't know. I just like uh, truly every time I'm on Instagram and I'm like, how is this pop? Like, how is this possible? The how answer, are they so hot? The answer is Brazil. I ah. think that some uh, some countries just have more beautiful people. But why? Like why Montreal, is that? everyone's really beautiful. <sighs> That's not a country officially, but they would like. Well, to I mean, city. I mean, they are know. a nation apart. What do you know about Canada? <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> Sophie Buttle knows a lot about Canadian politics. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yes. Guy, by the way, in case you don't know, you wrote a great book uh, and there's an entire chapter in it 
uh, My Life as a Goddess, and there's an entire <laughs> chapter in it about Guy's obsession with uh, Canadian history and Canadian trivia and Canadian everything. But my favorite thing about going, thank you for plugging the book, Moshe. My favorite thing about going to the Just for Laughs Festival is that every producer is sort of like, a nerdy person from Toronto with a clipboard who's, you know, essentially a 1990s sitcom geek. And every person who is doing your makeup or holding a camera is the sexiest French speaker on the planet. <laughs> like those men, like I shook hands with a cameraman and it was like, it's been so long since I shook hands with a man who had calluses on his hands <laughs> that I was just immediately you like that. Oh yes. <laughs> Interesting. Wait, wait. You never answered. What is a good butt on a man? What's the what's the ideal? The back goes down, and then there's this moment when it just plows at you. Plow. And I know it, about the plow. Well, I married a plow. You could do your hand on it. Yes. Two hands, if you wanted to. Absolutely. You could grab onto it when you're f fucking. You know. It, it, yeah. F fucking. Oh, effing. Oh, I'm used to being around the kid. <laughs> yeah. When we talk about fucking, <laughs> we always just say effing around the kid. I did. What did I say today? Where she was like, "What's that?" Oh. Yeah, what did you say? That was really funny. It was effing. She said like, "Oh, that's effing great," and she goes, "Mom, what's effing?" And and she goes, "Oh, I don't know." <laughs> I said, "I don't know." Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I just said it organically. Me, I said it. So plow, plow on you a get, man. You get it. A, man, a woman plows as well. But I would say on a man, you just sort of want a cantaloupe cut in half mm. there, and for it to have very little relationship with everything else that's going on, unless he has amazing thighs, in which case he is probably from Brazil. Uh huh. I have a cantaloupe. Uh, cantaloupe. It's just a very old cantaloupe. <laughs> Honey, you don't have a cantaloupe. No, it's a it's a cantaloupe. It's just been it's atrophied for a while, and it's gotten soft. And you have like a fig. <laughs> <laughs> Two figs. <laughs> plow plow. Plow plow. Um, well, honey, why don't we take a call? Yeah, guys, is there anything you've been thinking about before we? Do oh, I just want to know what his obsessions are. Oh, Currently. our child. Uh, we we still have it censored, so you'll she'll beep that. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. We'll beep. A beep will be funny. Okay. We, we, yeah, he just said the name of our child, and as you guys know, you'll never know what that is. Uh, what her obsession? What is she obsessed with Mermaids. right now? Oh, awesome. Yeah, I mean it's so hacky though. She was so close to. Um, it's this, been two years of mermaids. It has. It, we actually, so now I'm starting to think I'm trying to find like, are there some indigenous stories about mermaids? Something like lore? Yeah. We Is watched, there something I can talk? Like, I've, we've already watched I watched The Lighthouse stuff. with her uh -huh. recently, the w Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson <laughs> vehicle, and it didn't steer her off of the mermaids. What's the movie she kept asking about? Black phone. She kept oh, wanting to she see was black, phone with black phone because she was seeing the ad, the ads everywhere, and the nanny told her it was called black phone. The he, the, the Ethan Hawke horror film. <laughs> but then and she's, she's like, like, "Mom, I think it's streaming." Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "Why?" And she's like, "Because I've seen it on two billboards." She told me um, last night she made a video for us, and she ended it with peace. That's the level she's at right now. She's, wow. Yeah, she's like, "Hi, um, everything's good. I miss you. Thanks. Peace." peace. <laughs> So that's where she's it's at. It's almost like how I where was where I was at in seventh grade. Right. I feel like a four year old is kind of like a seventh grader. <laughs> yeah. Just depressing. Anyway, is she interested in anything more interesting than um, mermaids? I'm trying to think. Musically, she still hovers around child children's music, heavy metal, and um, and uh, palm wine music. She'll listen to any kind of music. She's she's special. She misses you, guy. Um. All right. Yeah. What do you think? Should we? Let's should we take do a call. call? They're I mean, I was gonna bring up anti-Semitism, but maybe next episode. Uh, let's take a call. Hey, Tosh. Yamosh. Yeah, you know, I just this week was thinking that there was a personality thing that I was dealing with. I got into a fight at the airport again. Oh my god! And I was like, I should really just talk to someone about s strategies on how to manage reactive anger like that. And then I thought, oh my gosh. Talkspace. Not only are they awesome, they make it so easy. You don't have to go into an office. It's less expensive than traditional therapy, and I could get help today. Using Talkspace feels a little like having a mental health professional in your pocket. Talkspace offers both therapy and psychiatry, <clears throat> Moshe, and being able to reach you out. You think I need more than therapy? <laughs> okay. And you're able to reach out to your provider at any time, anywhere. It makes taking care of your mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling, knowing that I, if I need to talk with my therapist, because I also have a therapist, Moshe, I can just send a message from wherever I am. It's pretty cool. As a listener of this podcast, you can actually get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. 
So to match with a licensed therapist today, everything, by the way, is super secure and you don't have to worry about your privacy at all. Just go to Talkspace.com. Make sure you use the promo code HONEYMOON and you'll get $100 off your first month and your show support for this show. Getting started is the most important part. There's no need to wait until something goes terribly wrong in your life to get a therapist. Talkspace is also there to help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialities, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. And if you don't match with your therapist, if you don't like the one you match with, they'll find you a new one. They've got lots and lots of really great professionals. Uh, Once again, $100 off your first month at Talkspace.com, promo code HONEYMOON. That's honeymoon and talkspace.com. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Have you ever thought to yourself, I want more Pablo? Uh, I know. Well, if you have a pet that you want to be around all the time, even when you can't have them with you physically, we, or if you have a kid that just loves your pet and wishes that they could bring that kid, that pet to school with them just to make them feel secure, we got to recommend Petsies. I mean, this looks so real. We have to do this with all of our dogs. You send them a picture of your dog and they make an incredibly lifelike doll of your dog. It's so awesome. What a great gift. But maybe you're not a dog person or maybe that isn't what you want. They also do this thing called Budsies, which is that you send them your kid's artwork, like this little purple guy over Our here. Our child is obsessed with this. She's already started like hooking right. in her other stuff. Yeah, animals. she like hung a pound puppy on, on it because she loves it so much. You send in your kid's artwork and they'll make a doll so of cute. the artwork. And it's really cute and super high quality, by the way. These are really cool holiday gifts. Cannot recommend enough. Visit Budsies.com for 10% off using the code HONEYMOON. That's Budsies, B-U-D-S-I-E-S, Dot com and the promo code HONEYMOON for 10% off. Okay, now we're going to call Vania in Texas. I wonder if she's familiar with Chekhov's work. Vania? Yes. That's a lot of stuffed animals for an adult, Vanya. <laughs> Vanya, we have a question. Have you heard of Anton Chekhov's Uncle Vanya? Only every day of my life. Wow. <laughs> Listen... <laughs> I, I knew it was a low-hanging fruit, but I, then I was also like, you live in Texas. It's possible there's not a big checkoff scene in Texas. I don't know. Maybe I'm just operating on assumptions here. What's happening? How are you? Hello. Um, I'm well. Oh, it's it's Natasha Moshe and our friend Guy Branham. I, are you all? You, you all identify as Jewish, yes? Oh, so you're going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all identify as Jewish. Why, Vanya? Perfect. So uh, my question today is about a different type of relationship. Um, I'm wondering, how do I connect with the Jewish people as a convert um, from progressive sect when the most accessible fraction of Jewish community in my city is the groups that don't believe I'm a real Jew? Oh, this is this. Now, this is why don't I can you guys fill me in? Why wouldn't they believe she's a real Jew? Well, uh, yes, I can do that. But I can just answer your question right now. There's a great community um, called Donda. Uh, it's the Donda Academy here in Los Angeles run by our brother Kanye West. And I would say he is probably the person you're going to want to connect to. He's kind of the all roads lead to Donda. And uh, let me just I'll just start there. Um, she converted. You know how you converted in the conservative um, um, sect of Judaism. Mm. Every sect of Judaism below every sect of Judaism rejects the sect below them. Okay, let me let me rephrase that. Okay. If, if you if you convert orthodox, everybody accepts that you're right, Jewish. Right, I've heard this. Before. If you convert conform uh, uh, conservative, everybody but the orthodox accepts that it was a good conversion. If you c- convert reform, n- n- only reform people. Are you trying to hang out uh, with people who are more religious than you? That sounds awful. <laughs> Let me finish the joke. And if you convert Reconstructionist, you like thought about bees for 15 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) How, what is your conversion in what, in what sect of Judaism is it? You're turning into deep Jew talk. What it was reform. Yeah. But I had, I had a mikvah and I had a bait Dean. So under conservative, a lot of conservatives will accept it. Okay. Um, Okay. But to answer Tasha's question, I'm, I don't want to be accepted by the more observant people, but they are 
the majority. There's three synagogues in my city, and it's a reform, a conservative, and an orthodox. And there's also Chabad, which still falls under orthodoxy. Um, but the only people ever hosting any opportunities to learn really are the more, are the orthodox. And I love, I'm a member at the reform synagogue, and I love them. And I love all the Jewish community. I'm not here to put um, any of my Jewish community like on blast. But Don't I was recently- Don't put us on blast. We hate that. That's one of our least favorite things. Um, the Talmud says it's your obligation to, as a convert, to try to convert as officially as possible. And that it is the obligation of the rest of uh, the Jewish community to defer to the Jewishness that you have. Basically, from both sides, there is a presumption, there should be a presumption of trying to do more. So walk in like you fucking own the place. Don't let anybody tell you that this isn't your Judaism. Moshe Kasher does a really good, I so frequently am like, I'm gay, I have to break laws to exist. <laughs> like, I don't know that there is a place for me in this community. And Moshe and so many people who are in my community do such a good job of reminding me that there is a, a place for me in Judaism. And like, you had a mikvah conversion. I mean, that's the, like, you know, like they washed all the Gentile off of you. Um, <laughs> like yeah, your for your foreskin fell right off in that mikvah. A mikvah, by the way, to our listeners, a mikvah. And this is deep. I understand. This is the the learning curve on this call is high. A mikvah. You did a mikvah. Yeah, it's like a body of water. That most people know what that is. I don't think that's true. Tell, oh. tell us about it. It's like a little, like almost like a hot tub, and there's these three men behind a curtain who are like singing the Shema while you like jump up and down into the... Singing a prayer while you... Singing the Shema, yeah. It's basically a baptism. I mean, it really is. It's not basically a baptism. It is literally a baptism. It's the no, it's origin naked. of baptism. Yeah, it is. Yeah. John the Baptist wasn't... Uh, he was doing a, a, a mikvah, some version of a mikvah. Okay. I, th I think right. I was naked, but... Um, oh, I know you were naked. I was watching the live stream. <laughs> Wait, so you want to learn more about Judaism or she you want to be, meet more people? She wants to be in the community but feels like people there are judging her what, because she's not legit. And I can confirm this because they did blah, 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 blah. Okay. I uh, have been involved for like a year with one of the Orthodox groups. And recently the, the rabbi's wife reached out to me um, to offer me an Orthodox conversion because it was going to be such a great opportunity for me and I told her no, um, because that would be remiss of me to like deny the credibility of the bait Dean I already said before and everything I did, like, did to get here. Um, and it led to this whole conversation of basically her saying, well, there's not a place for me. Um, but if I want to pursue orthodoxy, then I'm welcome to learn more. But really, like, I'm going to keep going to synagogue. They can't keep, keep me from Torah. Sounds like she's a little jealous of you. She's like, listen, honey, you're going to have to leave the, this uh, sect of... Also, it's like a, it's like I would say, embrace your Judaism through political grandstanding. Mm. And we live in a world where Israel still doesn't recognize marriages or conversions that are done by other than Orthodox um, like uh, officials. So, I mean, sort of take this on as no. I think it is important that we recognize a plurality, like difference of voices in our community, and speak up for yourself. Like we are like we we are a contentious and communicative people and i encourage you to embrace those energies within yourself and also i think that it would be a good idea if you like all the different um the conservative the orthodox all those all those different sects in your city can you like look up and see what what oh look up and see what they have going on in terms of activities like like outings evening things, buy tickets to it, anything that's like you can buy a ticket to it, then you can socialize with those people and you can still feel part of the community, you know, and you are Jewish. I, I, I don't, I, to Natasha, to me, you're definitely are not. But no, I am curious, uh, what city do you live in? What city is this? It, it's San Antonio. San Antonio. Ah. So what about, um, so what about, yeah, I mean, this classic, classic San Antonio energy <laughs> right here. I and mean, this is classic San Antonio Jewish energy. I mean, I, what about like, you know, kind of San Antonio Jewish energy? Yeah. You know, like remember the Alamo kind of vibe. And, <laughs> no, what about um, reaching out to, um, I imagine like Austin has, you're very close to Austin. I imagine Austin has a larger and more um, diverse 
um, and, and I mean diverse in the most um, Jewish way, by which I mean not that diverse, um, community where there's more subsects of progressive Judaism that are more accessible to you. Because my whole thing is like, why would you, why would anyone, I've struggled with this myself because I've struggled with thinking about wanting Orthodox uh, acceptance, even though I am not an Orthodox Jew. I grew up around ultra Orthodox Hasidic people and I wanted them to accept me. And then I was like, I don't respect um, a lot of their political viewpoints. I don't, I am not, religiously associated with them i i am not a hasidic jew i don't i don't observe that way why would i want people who i would never even aspire to be as religious as to acknowledge that i am religious in their framework like i don't buy their framework i don't accept their framework i, I mean i love them and they're my i they're my brothers on some weird sort of omni culture way but i don't ne- why would i need people who i don't think I align with philosophically to say, yes, you are good enough. Why do I need that? I don't need that. If you really believed that your conversion was leg- a legitimate spiritual experience, which I, I think on some level you do, but on some level you probably have an inferiority complex about it. And that is what, ref- unfortunately, uh, I wonder if the Endless Honeymoon podcast listeners are even following this. <laughs> but uh, reform. I'm on the edge of my couch. <laughs> <laughs> Reform conversions come uh, come equipped with an inferiority complex. They just do, and uh, uh, that's uh, maybe the most controversial thing I've ever said on this podcast. But they well, do. I even went over it in my cohort. They, they said like, not everyone's going to believe you're a Jew. So what are you going to do when people? Exactly, guy. As a corollary to uh, Natasha's comment about like going to stuff, I would say have more home games. Like you know, like organize a like a, a Torah study with people that you like. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. have have parties for you know for the weird holidays, and also be judgmental about the lack of beauty in a lot of Orthodox observation. <laughs> like truly, <laughs> roll like. Roll your eyes at an Orthodox sukkah. Those things look like cubicles. <laughs> also, imagine coming up to a woman in your church, if you were married to the rabbi, who really wanted to be a part of Judaism, and you were just saying, listen, unless you're going to convert like we are, you don't, you don't have a home here. I mean, that's just extremely rude. And th- those aren't nice people to hang out with. I mean, yeah, I, I have... <sighs> It's hard for me because I, I I do understand what's happening for them mentally. I don't um I don't know, like that's their truth. And I like I value that. Like they welcome. They said if you want to come, you can. You just have to like be orthodox. Right. I, and I, said, no. <laughs> so, I don't even value their truth. I just really get it. I feel I understand the world in which they're coming from. My question for you is do you think that you are Jewish? Yes. So why are you trying to get other people to tell you that you're Jewish enough? Be whoever you are. Be the person that you follow the spiritual path that you that is correct for you. And the truth is, like, if they accepted you based on the fact that you're not interested or willing to move, I was going to say up the ladder. I don't want to <laughs> hierarchicalize it. Move down the road towards their level of observance. Why do you even want to be there? Is it, It's just because San Antonio is a small town? I think like there's some part of you that's like wants them to go like, yes, you're good enough, but you're already good enough. You don't need some rabbi's wife to say you're good enough. And she she's do, dealing with her own stuff. Go to Austin, find a bigger progressive community. Um, you know, I would recommend leaving Texas altogether, but I, I get that's not uh, super um, realistic. But go to Austin, find a big group of progressives, and they don't—they're not owed your conversion story. When you step in a room, they don't, you don't have to step in a room like, "Hey, I wasn't born this." It's just like, be there, be the Jewess that you uh, that you are, and own that shit. Also, maybe. Like, if this isn't offensive, let's learn from our trans brothers and sisters and say, like, as Moshe's saying, I don't owe you my origin story. I just owe you my truth. Right. Yeah, that's a really good comparison, actually. Yeah, it's like, does a trans Say person- that to that rabbi's wife, bitch, <laughs> bitch wife. But does, does a trans person have to walk in the room and go, just so you know, I'm not cis. And I just want you to know that. Uh, 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 do you think I'm a woman? It's like, what? why? Why would they? But that sounds like so much work for it. And that you would never expect that of a trans friend, right? And so why are you? Put, I really like that comparison. Why are you putting that on yourself? 
It's because you got that inferiority complex. And it'll and you're probably a new convert, right? It's been like two years, but one of them was the pandemic. So. With time, with time, you will come to accept that you are who you are. Oh, I would also very much recommend um, like reading more stuff from people's like journeys of conversion. Yeah. Because like I think being exposed to a greater diversity of like Jewish experiences really helped me to understand my place in Judaism and to, you know, most of the, t- most of the reading, how old are you? Is that 25. all right? What? 26. 26. Okay. 26. So I was around your age when I was sort of like reading the most Jewish stuff that I was reading. And it really helped me understand like a path and a journey for myself that wasn't necessarily what everyone considered perfect observation, but was a place within Judaism for me. I have three more thoughts. Oh my gosh, three more, Moshe? And then I I think our (laughs) listeners are going to stop, are going to turn this episode off. Um, My my first thought is Judaism is in many ways a a religion of laws, right? And the the truth is like it, the, the, the laws, like this whole idea of like, I, I don't, I would never do another conversion because then it would, it would say that it meant that this other thing wasn't like that is just I don't who cares about any of any of that all that stuff is like if you want to do another conversion because there's more to learn then do it or because it makes your life easier you're Jewish now you'll be Jewish then it doesn't it's just are you frozen or are you just oh no I'm just in trance with your no you are frozen but you have you you have stopped okay second point second point okay point two I don't even know what point two is anymore. I have some names to give you. And I, this is, maybe we edit this out of the podcast, but here, I, okay, it's all good because we can edit it. Um, what, what, what guy was saying, yes, there's a guy named Yisrael Campbell, who is a great guy and a comedian who did three conversions. He converted reform, conservative and orthodox. And he does a whole one man show about it. And uh, he's a great guy, and I would recommend reaching out to him to talk to him about this. And the other person I would recommend that you talk to is a rabbi in Phoenix, a really great person named Shmuley Yankowitz, who is an Orthodox rabbi, but is one of the most pluralistic and progressive Orthodox rabbis in the country. And he is really, really good at this conversation. Um, and uh, that that's what I would recommend. Reach out to people, like I said, r- read books about this topic and reach out to people but most importantly is just like if this is your spiritual truth and you're feeling a connection to it like don't allow other people to dictate your truth to you and i i think that that's what i would say okay cool well good luck honey (laughs) thank you okay all right shalom shalom hey tosh yeah mosh you know what feeling i love the most Mm, I don't know if we can say it on the podcast. It's not sexual. It's sensual. It's the feeling of jumping into my Helix mattress at the end of the night and just being reminded how much I love my mattress. It's it's such a huge quality of life upgrade when you love your mattress. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. But we literally had this. I was having back problems and Natasha was sleeping hot. So we ordered their ultra firm mattress and we got the cool topper on top. That cooling top is magical. It's And the firmness is magical. I, I feel so good every time I get into that mattress. I had a friend just the other day that was complaining about their horsehair mattress, which are like the most expensive what? mattresses What? Someone was complaining buy. about a horsehair mattress? I guess mattress? you have to have a, them go by every six months and come into your home and turn them over. Stop it. And I was like, I got this super reasonably Don't do that. priced Helix mattress that is so luxury, so high quality. And every night when I sink into it, I'm like, ah. Take the Helix Sleep Quiz, match with your model of mattress, and just party. I should mention, my back problems went away. That no is joke. crazy. It's true. So, yes, Helix right now is offering up to $200 off all mattresses orders, and they'll give you two free pillows as well to our listeners. Just go to helixsleep.com slash honeymoon. Also, don't forget, there's a 10 to 15 year warranty on these things. And if you don't like them, you can actually send it back, but I, it won't happen because these mattresses You're are gonna so, love it. so nice. With Helix, better sleep starts now. $200 off all mattress orders, two free pillows, helixsleep.com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, mush. You know how recently weed has become like straight up a hardcore drug that is that has so much THC you'll forget you have a face <laughs> well, that's where dad grass comes in 
There's no stress over the holidays this year. You can smoke dad grass and it just gives you a little fun buzz. I remember like vomiting green marijuana pills up over a croquet set when I first met your mom yeah, at Thanksgiving. You don't have to worry about that with dad Too grass. Too strong. They've mellowed it out. It's legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. You may have heard about dad grass CBD joints, flour, and tinctures. It's 100% organic hemp to chill you out without getting you stoned yeah, to the bone. They're low in THC, but high in CBD. And speaking of bones, they've got a bunch of CBD dog bones that you can buy on their website as well. They've got all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so they're, it's federally legal in all states for ages 18 and over and it ships right to your door anywhere in the US. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash honeymoon. Go to dadgrass.com slash honeymoon for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash honeymoon. All right. Natasha, was that Jewish enough for you? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm pretty Jewed out, so let's call... Uh, can I say that? Yeah, sure. All right, let's call Nikki in New Mexico. <gasps> Please be a Jewish call. Please be a Jewish call. Please be a Jewish call. This is actually the way we combat anti-Semitism, by the way. It's not by doing a full-throated defense of the Jewish people and a takedown of anti-Semitism and talking about Kanye and what's been happening. It's just by... Just Jewing people to death. Just just the most in, inside baseball, just like, so what rabbi would you recommend could get me into the Jewish community in San Antonio? Do you have a recommendation for a cowboy? Hi, Nikki. Oh, she's connecting to audio. Nikki, can you hear us? Now I can. Hi. It's Moshe, Hi. <laughs> Natasha, Guy Branham. I see you're in a gamer chair. Do you game? Um, a little bit, but this is my husband's uh, office room. See, I was going to say, uh, I see you have a gamer chair, so I assume you're in a relationship with a man, but then I thought that was reductive, and I decided. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what can we do? How can we help you? What can we do? So, I'm looking to quit my job of 13 years because of my boss, and I need a break from it. Um, to put it in perspective, um, laugh. When the pandemic hit December of 2020, um, I had a fever of 91 degrees. I text everybody, hey, I have allergy symptoms and it's a little high. I just want you guys to know. Um, I got tested immediately, but that was when it was taking like weeks to get results back. Um, and my boss made me go to work and got my result at the end of the week and I was positive. So I want to just have your ideas as to what I should put into my resignation letter to kind of let her have it. <laughs> <laughs> guy, I'm glad you're here. I mean, nobody can. Uh, yeah, that's exactly why I wrote in for him. Nobody can pen a, sh a sharply worded letter like our friend guy. Well, also I just have a question. How, how large of a business are you at? Um, so I work with two other main people. Um, we had two doctors that actually quit because of her. Um, we had two other part-timers that have quit. Oh, do you? Oh, so oh. it's a really small company. There's no HR, no anything. To be, oh, to be fair, two of them died of COVID that you gave them, correct? <laughs> I mean, they didn't quit. <laughs> they weren't able to. Yeah. I yeah. mean, well, yeah. The other part is she's also anti-vax and all that beautiful well, stuff. Okay. <laughs> here's here's yeah. what I want you to... Wait, guy, hold on. I'm sorry. I want... I want you work... Are you comfortable saying what you what kind of company you work at? I, I'm a tech. I'm a vet tech. You work at a veterinarian's office that is anti-vaccination. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that yeah exactly? Isn't that isn't their that bread and butter? Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is she actually bought because there's a coronavirus that dogs get vaccines for, but it's not the same thing. And she actually bought a tray of that to try and push it on people for oh, their dogs. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I love this lady. She she's anti coronavax for humans, but pro coronavax for dogs. So you want to yeah. just like tell Absolutely. her off, guy? What were you gonna say? Sorry. Okay. 
I, it, it is important that you brought up that it, a business that just vaccinates dogs was unwilling to vaccinate people. That's hilarious. Um, okay, this resignation letter needs to turn into a demand letter. You don't want to sue these people. That would take too long. It's too annoying. It would be too difficult. But it never hurts to write a demand letter. You read a letter that where you list everything she's done um, about making you come to work during a pandemic while you were sick, about trying to uh, give people the dog coronavirus vaccine, and you tell her that in exchange for $10,000, um, you are willing to not report her to the state board, which could remove her, or um, to sue her you will renounce all of those rights for $10,000. And then if you want to a little bit after that, you put something about like, if you don't feel that that's an appropriate sum, we can figure something out, but get that money. You know what? I, I was hoping this would be a Jewish call as well. And it turns out it is. I, I love it. What were you going to say, hon? Um, she's, we actually had a conversation um, last week on Tuesday, I want to say, and the doctor was expressing how frustrated I was with her. And so I got on the phone call and I said, I just wanted to let you know that I have applications in and I'm going to be putting in my resignation soon. And she wanted to talk to me on Saturday. And I said, no, I've had plenty of conversations <laughs> with you. Um, so <laughs> What's I'm this done. Woman's I, don't, problem? I don't want to have any more is she, is she like, is she just a bitch? Yeah, she has a major power trip. Every Me and the other two associates have worked there for, I've been there 13 years. I think one's been there about 17 and the other one about 20 overall. Um, we've only worked there because we would get, you know, bonus bonuses for the, the work we do. Does she kind of think she's smarter than you? Oh yeah, she, she tries to pit me against other coworkers and, Honestly, one of my other coworkers is one of my best friends. And, you know, we learned right along when we I first started that she was going to try and spin different stories to us to kind of keep us pitted against. Is so she, she's just, she's a horrible person. Who is she? She's the head of the, um, do the dogs like her? <laughs> Did she get along with the dogs? Hopefully she hasn't been into the office in the last two years. So now, I, mean, what is she? I don't know how she's, dogs react to her anymore. Is she the head of the office she, or is she a veterinarian herself? No, she she just owns the clinic. She's not a vet. Oh, she, she's like a hospital hmm. owner. Yeah. Wait, that's crazy. She's not a veterinarian? Like, I didn't know that you could no. do that. As long as you have a vet to sign off on the facility license and practice there. Interesting. Do you feel Anybody like can own a vet. do you feel like you could make a demand letter like that? You have nothing to as long as you know you have nothing to lose, you're gonna quit any either way. Yeah, yeah. Because do you do you want do you want advice on what you should do or do you want advice on how to pen a really fucked up letter? Here's the problem. Like saying like things to her that are, you know, mean or condemn her in some way. Like, what do you really get from that? But that's why I like guys. Like, why not do yeah, that and something get out of it, some yeah. money? Like, yeah, that is. Yeah, like, absolutely. I, I like that idea, honestly. What, like, go to whatever, like, organization within your state licenses veterinary clinics. And it, there's probably an online form to report violations. And you have just, Ooh. like, given us a couple of really cool violations. I'm sure you know hundreds more and if you just wanted to peace out on her and then wreck her life that way that's a possibility you want to wreck someone's no. life yes she does she clearly does <laughs> uh, uh, no because i don't I, I, my co-workers are never gonna quit so uh, i don't necessarily want to ruin their lives but i would say writing a little letter that says hey 10 grand i don't ruin anything she's gonna send that to the, her lawyer and her lawyer is going to say we'll counter offer for seven yeah that's really smart but guy let me ask you this guy can you if it gets passed around can you get in trouble for demanding money from someone no, aren't you, you, you demanding like a bribe for something you should be turning someone in for no you're just offering a contract to renounce the claims that you have now that's the thing to understand first of all i am not giving you legal advice i'm talking about the law so please do not take this as legal advice but, but guy do you have any experience in the law <laughs> i do have a law degree <laughs> but does, i know does, i no does. longer have a bar membership in california but the thing is is you're just saying whatever claims against you i will make go away 
in exchange for 10 grand. But she can't make it go away if another person, and then if she tells her friend, they might want that's to how, do that. That's how NDAs work, right? They just have to get everybody to well, give Well, no, but the thing is, is what you're saying is, I won't do anything. And you don't have the power to control anybody else's relationship to, to that, but it is a, a very normal thing to say, I will relinquish my rights in to per, like pursue any causes of action against you in exchange for this amount of money. It is a very normal thing. It is like most thing like it is how you should always start as a lawyer with a nice demand letter that says for a sum of money you can make all problems go away. Yeah, and I have an addendum to your suggestion, guy. That form that you said, print it out and include it in the letter and and end your letter PS. I found this form online. I thought you'd be interested in seeing it. <laughs> And just print it out, unfilled out, just like uh, the complaint letter to the to the board. Just this is a form letter that I found. This is I found it really interesting. Here's something to think about. But you also have to move on, and like, yeah, you, you got to kind of like make peace with this a little bit. You know, not want to ruin their their life, and just try to like move forward into your next thing, and try to not be bitter. Yeah, no, I'm ready to move on. I just okay. want out. I'm done with thinking about that place. To be honest with you, so. Just happy to move on. And then I would say sign the letter, I love you. <laughs> I think that could be really nice. I like the to... idea of a demand letter. I never thought of that. I know. I like that too because it's like what good is sending an angry email really good? What in, in the really And is you it guys don't feel... share reality. Right. Is yeah. it really going to feel good? Are you really going to be like, she got hers? Because the reality is if she reads you going like, First of all, you're a fucking bitch. Second of all, but you know, she, you know, a woman like that is not going to read it and go like, "Whoa, I really fucked up." She's going to read it and go, "All of my suspicions about her are true. She's a fucking conniving, shit talking." Blah, blah. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather her have those feelings and then say, "But here's a check for seven thousand dollars." That sounds cool. And I think you should send guy seven hundred and fifty dollars if you do get that. Or seven hundred. And and even if it doesn't, even if they don't give you. Even if they don't give you money, it's still like they're going to be a little afraid. Yeah. And the way Nasha, Natasha is talking about it is really important. Don't once you send that letter, don't think about that letter ever mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Yeah. You might get a check or you might just know that she's somewhere nervous. Should should she say, guy, if if that if if you if you refuse to, you know, something, then I'm going to have to consider my other options. Yeah, I think that's a nice open-ended like way of putting it. Dun, dun, dun. So then from now on, she's just got to worry that maybe she's going to get reported at some point. Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. All right. I think we solved everything. All right. Well, good luck. Good luck out there. Have fun Thank in your next you. job. And could you send me some ketamine? <laughs> do you have access to ketamine at all? <laughs> Why would she? Because oh, yeah. they give it to cats. <laughs> They, they do? Cat. And this does not seem like an ethical do. place. Yeah, we do. It doesn't seem like an ethical place you work at. I would love you to just send me a big shipment of ketamine. And Guy told me it's legal. And he said, I am giving you legal advice. <laughs> All right, good luck. Have a nice night. I would love to see the swath of people. Who, like, what would it take to be convinced? Who are the takers for the dog vaccine? <laughs> it's so funny to take a vaccine to avoid a vaccine. I mean, the thing is, is I, I say that my mother's response to any situation is, but what does pseudoscience have to say? <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, there were all of those people who wouldn't get the vaccine, but then they were taking, you know, um, antifungal drugs sure. and stuff like that. Anything uh, that Joe Rogan told them to. Yeah, I, I think that I think that you're right. That it's it's not actually about. This is a person who knows that vaccines work. I, I that knows that they work because literally it's her bread and butter. It's about n not trusting a thing. Yeah, it's not about thinking vaccines don't work. It's about whatever the thing is. I can't trust that thing. And the thing is, is there's something super American about being like, oh, I'll make my own decision that I like and respect, except in situations where like a disease is rolling across the country <laughs> yeah although is this vaccine that good i'm, I'm over here i'm over here vaxxed as fuck talk, and i'm like what what is it doing at this point i've gotten it twice both from gay weekends like it really is a the vaccine didn't work b uh gay guys are just a locus of disease like <laughs> everything republicans think is true <laughs> i i was reading a article on cnn last night about a coven of vampires in new orleans and in atlanta and and it was like it was treating them with such deference that and it was like they do 
drink blood, but only consensually. They get much of their power from sex ritual and M-A-G-I-C-K. And I was like, this is an article <laughs> that Republicans are reading and going, I fucking knew it. I knew this Why was going on. Why did they spell on. magic? Well, you know, magic is like, woo- M-A-G-I-C-K is like woo-woo magic. It's not like um, ta-da magic. Oh, right. It's like totem magic. All right. Do we have a couple of secrets to play? No, she said the two calls is good. Oh, okay. We're good. Okay, we're good. So uh, let's. We should wrap up, guy. And then, sh- is there anything you're plugging? Oh, uh, watch Bros now available streaming on iTunes Movies Ooh. and Amazon. Bros. Wait, I didn't know you were in Bros. Yes. You just told oh, on yourself. I was about God. to say I loved you in Bros. Well, I just haven't not seen only, it yet. Not only, but as, not only is guy in it. He's a scene stealer. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh, you're in Chelsea's movie. You stole a scene. Oh yes, I still have not seen that. I'm I'm excited to well, get to not. see it. It's Guy, not. you didn't quit your day. Wait, you did quit your you quit your day job, <laughs> and it was a good decision. You're the most successful actor, writer, comedian, and I'm just, and and the best friend. And I just am thrilled that you're in my life. I love I love having you guys in my life. Two years of not seeing people led to a lot of forgetting how it is that you see people and and also how much in this business you just kind of rely on working with people as you know there have been lovely periods of my life when i saw Moshe and natasha every day right and i do rely on work to bring people into my life too much that's really real yeah do you feel like you are less social now than you were two years ago yeah i just have to like you know like the process of starting it back up is is weird and has felt strange because like I've also changed over the course of those two years and figuring out how it fits into, you know, it's like half the people I know like had an 18 month old when all of this started. Right. And now it's like truly my presumption that I cannot ask anyone to do anything if they have a child well, is something I need to get over. You could definitely ask us because we would love to hang out with you. But I also think that is true. It's very difficult to suss out. We've all been through this like mass trauma psychosis event i and do it's feel ve- traumatized and it, i have not felt traumatized yet in my life it's but it's very difficult on the other side of it to to for me to analyze what part of this is me being institutionalized and what part of this is the fact that i'm two years older yeah and i just have changed a little bit and three I, years I, older three years older by look three years younger <laughs> by the way i haven't even mentioned i shaved the mustache this is my world my i think it looks good my in. premiere this is the, my, my my old face is premiere it's very cute you do look good with a mustache though thank you guy that means a lot do you think i have a, co- a cantaloupe butt though <laughs> no it's two figs two two little withered figs with dead wasps inside uh ladies and gentlemen guy branham class act funny guy dear friend we love you guy thank you so much for having me i love you guys very much 